in the name of Jesus. If you want to see God move in your island, life, that even when it is physical rainy season, of the great it is still dry season spiritually, Bishop financially Samuel and Jai otherwise, Jai I decree and declare, let the rain begin James to Johnson. fall. These people did not start with preaching. Let the rain begin to fall. I had the opportunity to see their pulpit. Let the I rain had the opportunity to see how they called upon the God of heaven. And even at the threat of their lives, like the three Hebrew boys, they refused to bow to the forces of the land. They commanded some of your kings by the reason of the power they commanded in the heavens. They made some of your kings to accept Jesus openly. Today you are benefactors of that prayer. I pray for you. Whatever has killed your prayer life, whatever has brought you down to a point of spiritual coldness, may that fire be fanned aflame tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The move of God will always suffer when people do not pray. When it's time for prayer meetings, carry your children. Don't say they are too young. You will not be here forever. Respectfully speaking, this is the mistake that the West made in the 60s and 70s when the move of God was so strong. Many of the parents were in that revival but they forgot their children. Remember what Pharaoh told Egypt. He said, we'll let you go, but leave your children behind. They said, no way. We are all going. Anything that makes you to neglect your children in carrying them along, one generation of neglect will return Satan back to a territory. Please listen to me tonight. This is a prophetic message to the body of Christ. One generation of neglect 30 days without prayer was all that the parliament in Babylon needed. 30 days without prayer and a house of assembly sat down to pass a decree. All Satan needs is that short a time and he will wreak havoc over a territory. Men and women who know how to pray. Once it is night, you wake up with a sense of responsibility. Not just give me bread, give me tea. Oh God, the other day you gave me five naira. When will you increase it to 15 naira? There is a place for that. But I'm talking of men who would carry the map of Boni Island. Put it on your prayer altar. Shakatos kapata. Embreketes keta. Lord revival. Lord fire. Lord salvation. Let the fire of God fall on the streets. Fall in schools. Fall everywhere. This is how revivals are birthed. This is how revivals are preserved. You must trust God for grace to conquer gluttony. Gluttony, you must trust God to return back to the old pattern, the ancient art of prayer with fasting, not prayer while browsing, not prayer while picking a call that you turn the plates in your house upside down and your house becomes an altar where angels are used to coming and going because they found out that a, an altar of prayer has been built from that place. Someone open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. Lord, it's time for a move once again in Bonny Island. Thank God for what we have seen. Thank God for the sacrifices of the fathers and the veterans in the land. Once again, oh God of heaven, arise like the mighty God that you are. Blow in power, blow in power upon Bonny Island. Are you praying? Shake it up, cut up, cut up, cut up. Embrace it, cut up, cut up, cut up. Rock it up, run it, cut up, cut up, cut up, cut up, cut up. Embrace it, cut up, cut up, cut up, Don't be tired. You're here for a conference tonight. Shkada Balakata. 
Lord, let there be a restoration of apostolic signs, apostolic wonders. Do again, oh God, what you did before. Heal again, oh God, the way you healed before. Deliver again, oh God, the way you delivered before. Change again, oh God, the way you changed before. We are available vessels. We will give you no rest until you establish Jerusalem as a prayer. The covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. Covenant keeping God. One more time. Listen to me. Listen. I challenge every family here. Turn your house into a prayer altar. There has to be a space for a divine visitation in your house. As a father, as a mother, let your children know prayer by watching you pray. Not by learning it in Sunday school. Let them learn prayer from you. That whilst they are sleeping in the middle of the night, they hear daddy taking away the cloak of CEO. Taking away the cloak of a professional. Wear your priestly regalia. Walk from room to room. Laying hands on the children. Oh, you will be part of the move of God. You will be part of the fire of God. Mateka Paruskiata. Lay hands on them. Make it decrease. Prophesying upon the land. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let's hurry up. So the first key for the preservation of the move of God across a territory is the priesthood ministry of prayer. You can sit down, my dear people. Just focus on your writing. Number two, very quickly. The second key, if you want to see the move of God preserved in your territory, there must be a regular convergence of believers within this territory to be trained, to be equipped, to be mentored, and to be empowered. There must be platforms across your territory that allows for a regular convergence of believers whether it is church activities whether it is non-denominational activities there has to be a platform that allows for regular convergence of believers for the purpose of training discipleship mentorship and empowerment community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values when people live in isolation to a larger body of truth, it becomes easy for them to be a prey. Community living helps you and gives you the strength to sustain kingdom values. Is someone learning tonight? The second key, a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, 
to be equipped to be mentored and to be empowered Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 down to 47 this was the blueprint that the early church received this was the blueprint that the early church handed down to us Acts chapter 2 please from verse 42 help us media Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrines and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers notice the content of their gathering and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles down to 47 next verse and all that believe were together all that believe were talk to me all that believe were community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values so when you are weak you will hear your neighbor praying and he can encourage you he can tell you let's go to church and you want to give an excuse there is no fuel he says no problem my car is available community living will crush the spirit of backsliding and complacency the Bible says and all that believe were together and had all things common uh-huh and sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need two more verses and they continuing how long please talk to me continuing there has to be a daily contact it may not be so for church but the family unit is the basic unit where there must be a daily contact that makes for continuity of spirituality many of you remember this is how we were raised though night prayers or morning prayers or both a time when they share the truth now you have children reproduce that same result don't just give them secular education alone you must connect them to the God that lifted you to this level they should not know book alone they must know God in the beginning God we live in a world today where when a child is educated master's PhD no matter how deprived he is spiritually we say it's all right it's just that he doesn't know God but he's a very serious person what is our yardstick of seriousness in one day the powers of darkness can sweep that destiny and every labor of 10 20 years can be over what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul are we together now They continuing daily with one accord in the temple and in breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. As a result, 47, watch this. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. How long? Because they met daily, he added daily. If they meet yearly, he will add yearly. He will meet you at the frequency of your seriousness. Number one, prayer. Number two, the regular convergence of believers to be trained, to be mentored. Do you know the reason why we have a lot of young people with zeal and passion and power, but we have a plethora of variations and a lot of inconsistencies because people had a lot of zeal but there was no structural system for mentorship either because those who went ahead of them did not have time they were busy doing ministry and they neglected the young people or because of rebellion on the part of the young people to not submit themselves to learning either ways we we'll still land a generation in trouble When it has to do with raising people, nobody outgrows the need to be trained, to be guided, to be mentored at whatever age. When it has to do with the matters of the kingdom. This is why God gave local assemblies in every territory. 
so that believers can converge and learn the ways of God understand the principles of God and be discipled discipleship is the platform that allows for the communication of doctrine doctrine represents the exact body of truth allocated for the methodical growth and transformation of believers within a territory now please look at me if you have can I use two gentlemen two gentlemen just come let me use you You stand here, you stand here. Or you can go back, sir. Let me use this one. Come. Watch this. If this guy is a... You have a lot of engineers here, so let me use an engineering term. If this man is an engineer working with, say, NLNG, and this man is an engineer working with, say, Shell, look up. Did you know that even if they never meet, it's possible for them to meet one day and they are discussing like colleagues because the manual that was used for their training was similar. Even though they may never know themselves, by the time they meet, the differences will not be far because what they learned was not their opinion. So how come a Christian in Kano or a Christian in Maiduguri or a Christian in Lagos and another Christian in Ghana, when two of them meet, you wonder how they got born again, who they gave their lives to. It tells you that there is a corruption in the manual. Not necessarily corruption in the zeal. The template for mentorship is wrong. We should meet as believers. And if I say bless you, you shouldn't ask me what are you saying. This is a language of the kingdom. I want to sow a seed and you say, this is strange. I don't know what you are talking about. Can we pray and fast? And you say, no, 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 no. I don't know what this means. Let's go to church. You say, why? Today is Tuesday. You see that kind of thing. The disparity in the quality of believers enthronement. If you do not believe in the ministry enthronement. If you do not believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. If you do not believe in the virgin birth. If you do not believe in the power of the word and the power of the Holy Spirit to transform and guide believers as they sojourn, if you do not believe in God's agenda, global missions of winning the world, if you do not believe in influence, the strategy that enthrones Christ across a, a, the a strata, if you do not believe in all of these things, then you do not believe he is coming back. You are not a Christian. It's as simple as that. The cure for this disparity of errors is to have a methodical template. Maybe not the same. Right now there are vaccines for COVID-19 by different companies. But principally, I believe that the pharmacology of those vaccines are similar. Otherwise you would not be allowed to administer because it's the same human beings. If you give me an option to take this one or that one, it means that the pharmacology is not so different as far as how it will work in my body. I should be able to attend any church within Boni and know that my Sunday service will not be a waste. I should be able to attend any service and know that in that service there will be prayer, that there will be worship, that there will be giving, that there will be the word. That the world will be targeted at winning souls, transforming believers, and empowering people. Regardless what sermon, it must contain these things. A provision for sinners to be saved, a provision for believers to be transformed, and a provision for believers to be empowered. The greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. The greatest need of a believer is transformation. The greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment. This must be captured upon our pulpits, regardless the church, regardless the assembly. Are we together? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. Number three, are we learning something tonight? The third key that preserves revivals and the move of God across our territory is that there must be an open display of real miracles signs and wonders that go beyond the church wall 
there must be a manifestation of the wonder-working power of God in miracles, signs, and wonders beyond the church walls. Oh, was I blessed this morning as I heard the stories of men and women. We were told stories of people who defied death in your land. We were told stories of people who defied all kinds of things. Men who spoke to your seas and gave them borders by prophecy to not cross beyond. There must be a restoration. Let me tell you this. A territory that does not see Jesus in action will not believe Jesus is alive. A territory that does not see Jesus in action will not believe that Jesus is alive. John 4, 48. Please give it to us. John 4, 48. Read with me if you are a Christian and you can see it projected. Ready? Please read. One to read. Jesus said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. We live in a world today that is full of options. Options that bear the Christian faith to the face. We must present a Jesus with proofs. We must present a faith life that is attractive enough to compel all and sundry. The woman said, come see a man that told me what I have done. When one madman in Gadara, one madman, God delivered single-handedly. His miracle was responsible for the salvation of 10 cities. One miracle. Why are miracles important? They create convictions in the heart of communities. Miracles create convictions. They help people know that Jesus is alive. Even if they refuse to acknowledge his lordship, they go back with their hearts burning within them. Are we blessed? This is why we need the anointing. Acts chapter 19 from verse 11. Acts 19, let's hurry up. Verse 11. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of the inhabitants of Bonnie Island. Hmm. Go ahead, media. Next verse. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them the evil spirits went out of them 13 and certain of the vagabond Jews exorcist took it upon themselves to call over them which had an evil spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus saying we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached they thought it was magic and there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did so. What happened to them? The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Joshua Selman I know. He says, who are you? That means while you are praying and preparing your spirit, there is a register in the spirit that is showing your consistency. It is not only angels that are seeing it, demons are seeing it too. You don't just come on stage and say, be healed, be delivered. Just because you read it in the Bible, there must be a track record of consistently building yourself in the spirit. Let's read on. We're reading to 20. Please give it to us quickly. The Bible says, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Imagine that kind of reproach to the name of the Lord. That we are in a meeting like this and you see me running out naked to the streets of Bonnie. What happened? They said two fierce people under the influence of spirits 
and people outside keep hearing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And Joshua Selman is running out naked. He say, I, I better run out naked than to die. What a reproach to the name of the Lord. The Bible says this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell upon them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19. Many of them which used curious acts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and it was 50,000 pieces of silver worth of magic books. 50,000 pieces of silver worth of magic books because there was an open display of miracles, of signs, and of wonders. So mightily grew the word of God, and it prevailed. I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for all kinds of people, Christians, Muslims, free thinkers, traditionalists, and every time they come to me, they don't care whether they are Christians or Muslims. They just say, we have heard. Let me tell you this, in the presence of real results, people will keep every excuse and every prejudice. The reason why people bring all those things is because they don't trust that your results will work. Are we together? Open display of real miracles. One of the things you're going to be receiving tonight by the grace of God is an impartation of grace for signs and for wonders there has to be people in we need to be hearing from all over this country this happened in Boni. just when we're about to reconcile we hear that another one has happened that a popular madman on your street while fellowship was happening he made a mistake and touched the gate of the church just the gate the power of god electrocuted him there and you came and met him in his sound mind as that testimony is going all over Port Harcourt, then we hear again that three dead people from different points came back to life. Let me tell you this. You will pull a level of force that you wake up in the morning and find people kneeling in front of churches and say, I don't know who is the pastor of this church, but I, know I will not rise up from my knees. The God who did this, may he come and change my life. Listen to me. A hospital never goes to look for patients. They just put enough equipment and patients from everywhere, even if they cannot stand, they carry them and take them to that hospital. When you become like that hospital, men will defy everything and they will look for you. May it be like that for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four. What is the fourth key as far as preserving revivals is concerned? The fourth key is the intentional mentorship of younger believers and younger ministers for the purpose of legacy and succession. The intentional mentorship of younger believers and younger ministers for the purpose of legacy and succession. Bonnie Island, do not let your fathers transit in the faith if Christ tarries without raising and tracing sufficient young people. And the key is not to wait until you are old. I received a very humbling orientation. One of your plans here that to shut it down for 30 days it takes at least two years of thorough preparation. That's how it must be. Fathers of faith in the land, may I beseech you by the message of God. Do not wait until you are 50, 60, 70 when you do not have that strength again. No. Let's begin to train the young ones from infancy. Have you seen how they train footballers in many countries? Many of you are football fans. You notice that when the professionals are coming, there are some young boys that also wear jerseys. Have you seen that happen? Those young boys you see are the great footballers, soccer players of tomorrow. They don't wait until those ones retire 
right from infancy. They identify them, give them scholarships while they are schooling, they are training. We must employ that same strategy. There must be people who are anointed to do children ministry in Bonny Island. And don't laugh at them and feel they are just children. That person you are pushing away may be Samuel the prophet tomorrow whose word will not fall to the ground. And oh Eli, if you are not sensitive to train Samuel, when you are gone, Israel would have no priest and no prophet. One of the major assignments of a true father of faith and a true veteran of the gospel is that you must look back and see people you are reproducing your ideologies, your values, your disciplines and your training son. At every level you can start. A father should not wait until his son is 18 years before he starts telling him this is right and wrong. In our stubborn world today by 18 years most things have become like metals in the head of the children. At age two, three, as you take your offering and take a seed, you give that same child, Junior, hold yours, watch what daddy is doing. Daddy is going to sow into the, ma the, the life of a man of God. And you see the little boy do it. I come from the north and they practice this very strongly in Islam. Right from infancy, they begin to raise them with such fierce, unrivaled discipline. We must restore the mentorship of young people. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. It says the same. Commit thou to faithful men who shall also be able to teach others. Is the reason why you must allow people go through process in life so that they can learn the pathway. Don't just give people results without experiences because what they learn in the process is greater than the result. It is from the knowledge of the process they can mentor others. Are we together? When you are about to pray, let the children pray too. They can break their fast by 12 or even if it's 11 o'clock. But let them participate no matter how small. Let them be part of that history of growth and transformation. Train up a child, the Bible says, in the way he should go. That means you must know the way yourself. The way he should go. He says, and when he is old, he will not turn away from it. The next reverence, Bishop Ajayi Crowders, James Johnson's, the next... T.L. Osborne's, the next Kenneth Higgins, the next Ayo Babalolas must start their process in Boney Island immediately. Immediately. Teach them to sit down and read books. When they are loitering around, tell them, young man, I love you and I love your destiny. You say you have the call of God upon your life. Your first assignment is not invitations to preach. Your first assignment is the cave of Adulam. That's where men are made. The stage is not for training. The stage is for execution. Go and sit down. Yes, I know you are a great man of God. Run away from anybody who does not have a history of service that built him. People don't just become. Many years ago, I had the honor and the privilege of playing this keyboard you are seeing. I used to play for it a, a prison ministry. They were part of the people who went to preach for Basanjo later in the years in prison. We didn't just become what we became. No. From one service, you are in a subgroup. You are joining like these gentlemen now, doing something. One day in your little group, they will say, help us close the service with prayer. Then you will now bring what happened in your secret place to that prayer group. You will pray for 10 minutes. And everybody begins to sense there's something about this man. Next time they'll say, okay, we give you 15 minutes. And while that happens, God will be speaking to your pastor and say, the next time you see this man, when there is a meeting outside, give him five minutes. That's how people are trained. All this balloon success of getting up overnight is the reason why a lot of people rise up and crash down.
when God lifts you, he supports you. But when you jump up, you will come down. Let us help younger ministers, but not condemn them. Let me speak to the fathers respectfully. The younger ministers will have a lot of mistakes. The younger ministers will have a lot of error. They have zeal, but they may not have wisdom. We must have the heart and the patience because us too, God helped us. We learned on the job. He trained us, but nobody's ever trained enough. As you start, you will see the need for adjustment in character, in discipline, in excellence. Let's not be too harsh on people who are coming up. They may have prayer, the grace to pray, the grace to prophesy, but you may see pockets of pride here and there. Don't discourage them. The grace is genuine. Just call them to order and adjust the excesses because in discouraging them, the devil will give them alternatives and tomorrow when they still become great without your influence, they will fight you. When I was about to start ministry, I wrote a letter to so many men of God across the globe. Then internet was not really, and then phones was, but I wrote a letter to many ministers. I believe for justifiable reason, many of, many of them probably did not even reach them. But there was one man who replied me back. He replied me handwritten, and he became an uncommon mentor up until his death, Dr. Miles Monroe. Right from Bahamas, a young boy wrote him. I said, this is what God wants to make out of my life. And I was surprised when the post office reached me. And I went and I saw a letter. Not that a secretary wrote and he just signed. He wrote it by himself and signed. And I made up my mind. I said, Lord, as you lift me, grant me the grace that no matter how busy I am, let me also be able to look back and see someone who is coming up. Because this thing is a relay. Others ran it and gave us. Whether we like it or not, woe betides a man who turns back and there is nobody to pass that baton to. Listen to me. I had a meeting a few months, I would say, with a great servant of God in this nation. And he was telling me that one of the veterans of the gospel, I will not mention his name for respect and honor, he began to lament and said, our days are getting close and yet there are not sufficient young people to collect these buttons. The grace that made us to lift wheelchairs on crusade grounds, there are not faithful people who have been mentored. Are we going to go to the grave like that? One of the men that I met before he went to be with the Lord, I remember he had met a lot of God's generals and I asked him, I said, what did they say? And I remember him telling me, he said, Smith Wiggles what? told Lester Sumro, he says, when you are old, do not die with your mantle. He said, find young men, train them and pass this baton because you also, you received it. Let me tell you this, whether we like it or not, the cloud is already changing across Africa. Oh yes. In the next 10, 20 years, there will be a complete spiritual shift in the continent of Africa if Christ tarries. It's not prophecy. It's what wisdom and understanding of the nature and the principles of life. But the question is that will there be faithful men? Gehazi would have been the one to receive that grace from Elisha, but his unfaithfulness and his greed robbed him of that opportunity. Younger ministers, please hear me. Let me beseech you by the mercies of God. Humble yourself. Remain in the wilderness until your season of appearing. This itch for fame, this itch for popularity, we must love God beyond it. God will lift you beyond your imagination. Do you know when I started ministry, I hope I'm not wasting your time. When I started ministry, I stand before the God of heaven. I did not know that they used to give people anything called honorarium. That when you preach, they can package sugarcane and uh, mango and banana in a bag and say, thank you for coming. It was never the motivation. It was a desire to see Jesus lifted. A desire to see Jesus glorified. I didn't even know that men used to have protocol and PA. 
to move around and secretary. No, we were driven by genuine hunger, unadulterated hunger. Please, let's be careful those we listen to. Let's be careful what we hear so that wrong seeds may be sincerely so are not planted in us that corrupt our desire from day one. The purity of your motive is one of the determinant of your usability as far as territorial revival is concerned. You should not just be available, you must be usable. Number five. The third key for preserving territorial revivals is called influence. Now, this is the part that affects everybody. Influence. This has to do with God raising people and putting them in high places. Influence is very important. What is influence? The ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies and your value systems without using force, without using cruelty, is called influence. The ability to compel men to buy into your value system, to buy into your ideologies without using force, without using cruelty, is called influence. If you're with me, say amen. Influence is very important. Right for reference, we may not have the time to read it. Acts chapter 18 from verse 10 to 18. Acts chapter 18, 10 to 18. We need influence. You must pray that the leaders of the oil companies, the captains of industry, the kings and the nobles in the land, you must pray that God captures their heart. When a king is saved, his land is saved. When a CEO is saved, everybody under him is saved. Rather than trying to save people one by one, we must trust God to capture the kings of the territory so that the territory will come under the influence of Christ. The last point we're about to pray what is the last key that preserves territorial revival? An open display of love. Hear me, Bonnie Island. Hear me, body of Christ. An open display of love without preference, religious biases, or cultural biases. An open display of love. Not just love to Christians. Not just love to church members. An open display of love without preferences, without religious biases, without cultural biases. Where we contribute to developing communities, we contribute to blessing people, Christians, Muslims, unbelievers alike. God is not the God of Christians alone. God is the God of all flesh. And we must be able to reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way beyond the walls of culture, beyond the walls of religion. If we only show kindness and love to Christians, then there is a message we are communicating to non-Christians. There must be a dimension of the love of God that must be enjoyed by everybody in this island. So you can see a traditionalist and even though he's not born again and every opportunity you find you preach the gospel to him but then listen carefully you can shake him how are you god bless you my brother i'm going to church would you like to come no no no, no i'm not going to. anyway that's all right i'll pray for you you crack a joke not that you turn and say shame on you and he says shame on you too no. love There are miracles that happen to all. A major part of today was a downpour of rain. And I did not see the rain falling on Christian homes alone. I saw that the rain came upon everyone. Your sea here, your rivers are full of fish. 
the fish does not run away from unbelievers and go to Christian nets. It is the provision and the love of God to everyone. Whilst we ultimately pray and intercede and press that the entire land comes to the obedience of Christ, we must be able to show love without prejudice. We must show love, pure love, love for people. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Post. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and look at her. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.